Hey guys, what's up? I made the tutorial and it's gonna come out on January 24th, which is next Tuesday on aetutsplus.com. The only issue is that it's going to be a premium tutorial, which means that you kinda have to pay for the content. However, you're in luck because I didn't wanna leave you hanging if you didn't wanna pay for the tutorial, that's okay. I went ahead and made a breakdown of all the effects. Didn't go step by step, that would kind of make the tutorial kind of pointless. But I did show you the main principles and the ideas behind the effect in the shot. Also, I'll upload a few screenshots of my workflow here to my Facebook page. So go ahead and like the Facebook page. It's the first link in the description. And when the tutorial comes out, that will be the first link. So, yeah. That's also a pretty good place to leave a comment if you want to get in touch with me at all. Anyway, link's in the description. And I guess we'll go ahead and get into the breakdown. Alright, so here is the source footage, and as you can see, I placed a tracking marker on my hand made out of a couple thin strips of electrical tape. Making a dot with a permanent marker works as well, but this is what I had at the time. So the tracking information from this shot is used to drive the deformation of the fire elements in the effect. And if we take a look at the fire itself, you'll see it's not just a single element, but three. I used the Action Essentials pack and combined the two Windy Torch fire clips and a Turbulent Torch fire clip. I scaled down and squeezed the width of the turbulent fire to make it seem as if my palm was really burning right there at the base, and I also layered the two windy fires at different sizes to achieve the look of making the flame seem thinner more towards the top and more intense towards the source. For the deforming effect, I used the puppet tool, but there are a couple things you have to do before you can proceed. First, since these elements are pre-keyed, you have to put a black solid behind them so that the alpha transparency goes away. Second, you need to pre-comp these three fires and the solid into a single layer so that when you apply the puppet tool, it affects all of those layers at once. Before applying the puppet tool, you need to have five null objects spaced out evenly along the height of the flame, with the bottom one being at the center of the base of the fire, and the top, well, being right at the top. Be careful to have the nulls all share the same x-coordinate position with the points in the top left of each null square being the actual position of the null, just like a mouse pointer. Also, make sure the nulls are separated by the same number of pixels each. In my case, they're in 70 pixel increments. This separates the fire into vertical quadrants. Now you can apply the puppet tool pins to the null object points. Once they're all placed, and make sure you have five points and that they're all in order, then alt-click on the position stopwatch of the pins to parent each pin's position to their corresponding null object. Moving the nulls should now move the pins and deform the fire. All right, next you need to duplicate these null objects, except for the bottommost one, which I labeled as source, and then parent the position of the originals to the new ones. So now when you move the new null objects, the original nulls move, which in turn moves the pins. Now these new ones you have to parent to the source, but in a way that doesn't move their current position which is why it was important to have the nulls all be separated by a constant increment. I'll, like I said, I'll upload a screenshot of these settings to my Facebook page so that you can study them and match your settings. But basically, I parented null 1 to the source and added an expression to subtract 70 pixels from the y-axis to move it back to its original place. And then I did the same for the second null to the first null, third to the second, and so on. Now when you move the source null, all the other nulls move with it. So you need to add an expression to the end of each original null with the pins linked to them to make them lag behind in time. That expression is value at time, open parentheses, time minus a number, close parentheses. Again, I'll upload a screenshot because it's important you write this exactly with the correct capital letters, otherwise it won't work. The numbers I use to lag each layer behind goes from 0.1 seconds 0.18 seconds, then 0.24, and then 0.3 seconds, going from bottom to top. The last thing you have to do is click and drag the composition down just a little bit until you see a purple inverted trapezoid, and then let go. This brings up both compositions so that you can parent the source null to your hand tracking null. And remember that all of these links are applied to the position setting itself, and not the null object as a whole, which would cause some weird things to happen. So now, as you can see if I go back to the fire and solo the null objects, as my hand moves, the duplicated nulls move with the source, and the original nulls try to catch up to match their position, with each one lagged behind by a small yet larger amount of time. And since these nulls are linked to the puppet tool pins, the fire will distort in the exact same path as the lagged null objects, creating the effect that when fire burns upwards, it is independent from its source, just like in real life. 
That's all you have to do to make the final effect, but of course you can add some final touches, such as a mask solid matched to the color of your palm, and then linked to the tracking null to cover the tracking mark, along with some masked adjustment layers with the curve effects applied also linked to the hand tracking null. One final touch I did was to apply a displacement map to the footage with the fire as the source and set the uses to saturation at the default distortion. If the displacement is way offset, go ahead and pre-comp your fire again and move all the attributes, which should fix most issues. And that's the final effect. I hope you learned something from it, and if you do need more help, I do go over this effect step-by-step -step in the tutorial on ae.tutsplus.com, but like I said, it's not free, which is why I made this video. Also, I guess, uh, leave a comment or something saying which effect you'd like me to tackle next, and I'll see what I can do. All right, later.